This is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It is the maximum, the upper echelon of everything Apple has to offer on their smartphone. The maximum chassis, maximum cameras and camera tech, and maximum battery. Oh, and the maximum price. This isn't the phone for everyone, but does it hit the mark for those it's aimed at? I'm gonna break it all down for you with this Max review. It's gonna be a long one, so hit those chapter markers below if you wanna skip around to the different content that may interest you the most. Let's go. Hey, if any of these videos here have helped you, if this one helped you, please consider hitting us with the thumbs up, hitting that subscribe, and hitting the notification bell so you'll be notified when we release the latest videos. The iPhone 12 line this year has been notable with its release of the iPhone 12 mini, the Hobbit in the lineup. And if that's the Hobbit, then this must be small the big old dragon it's massive armored and has a love for gold as dragons do i have here the 512 gigabyte gold tone pro max and you already know i love big phones and i cannot lie this device is equipped with apple's 6.7 inch OLED panel sporting Apple's Super Retina XDR technology with HDR support. And in true Apple fashion, that HDR support is for the creme de la creme, Dolby Vision flavor of HDR. Let's spend a moment here. I must correct something I erroneously said in a previous review. Netflix does in fact support Dolby Vision for mobile, as does Disney Plus and Apple TV. Here's the thing though, looking at a phone which doesn't support Dolby Vision, I don't know if most people will notice the difference. Here's a pause scene from Daredevil. Though the iPhone's display definitely shows more range and color, having worked in the industry for a couple decades, I immediately saw it. I've often asked people, hey, do you see these things in the picture that I'm seeing? And they often don't notice until it's pointed out. Let me know in the comments below if the difference you see here actually matters to you. With that said, I will tell you absolutely and without a doubt, this display is magnificent and I absolutely appreciate the broader range of luminance and color. It's part of a package, you see. Pairing the dynamic range of the display with spatial audio and AirPods Pro or AirPods Max you really wind up with what is essentially a home theater in your pocket. And if you've had the chance to listen to spatial audio on a phone, on an iPhone, you'll know that isn't hyperbole. It is absolutely one of the best entertainment experiences on a smartphone. And while we're talking about the front of the phone, if you don't have AirPods Pros or can't afford the AirPods Max, they sold out, so someone or someone's can, apparently, then you'll be treated to one of the loudest set of stereo speakers I've placed in front of my DB meter. Yes, the speaker grill on the front of the phone isn't just for phone calls, it is part of the stereo pair, and the two together are clear and loud. All of that goodness is set below Apple's new Ceramic Shield protective technology, which they say makes the device a display four times more shadow resistant if you drop it. Also on the front of the phone is Apple's True Depth camera that is a 12 megapixel front facing shooter, which has night mode, deep fusion and HDR3, along with the most interesting new tech, HDR video recording with Dolby Vision. Of course, in order to see that, you'll have to watch on this display only or upload to YouTube, which supports HDR then you'll actually need to watch on a display which supports HDR. This camera also supports Face ID, of course. Stills are bright, contrasty, and sharp under ideal conditions. In less than ideal conditions, you still get solid images and video, which are low noise and well balanced with the dark and light areas. One area I've found problematic, though, in this generation of iPhones is the bokeh effect 
on the front facing camera. It often blurs only part of the backgrounds of my photos. I've found this to occur consistently across all four iPhone 12 models that I've tested. That said, the low light performance of the video capture is pretty good and looks outstanding in HDR with the increased luminance and dynamic color range. This is footage of me trying out Fitness Plus and coincidentally yoga for the first time. On the iPhone's display, this video looks great. There is noise in the image as I was in a very dimly lit room, but the highlights, shadows, and contrasting colors are sharp, all things considered. The right side of the phone is where you'll find the power slash sleep wake button. The left side of the phone is where you'll find the volume buttons, the alert slider, still one of my favorite features on a phone, and the SIM tray. Bottom of the phone is where you'll find the lightning port, other half of the stereo pair of speakers, and the microphone. And now, the back of the phone, the Pro Max cameras. Now, while the Pro and Pro Max cameras do share some features, the Max takes some to a higher level. You get a sensor with larger pixels to capture more light, a little more zoom with the Max, 10-bit, HDR Dolby Vision recording, which in human speak just means in the simplest terms that when you're recording stuff, more data is recorded, more information about the image, about the visuals you're recording. You're also gonna get LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, a technology which should help with the camera focusing in low light conditions. And you get a camera where the optical image stabilization is actually part of the sensor hardware and not the actual lenses. That's a larger technical explanation, but know this, of the types of optical image stabilization, generally this kind, this sensor shift optical image stabilization is the most effective at helping you keep your handheld still photos and videos blur and shake free. Or, or, or shake less, less shaky. Uh, well, they make everything smoother, like Billy D. Williams in a Coke 45 commercial, or as Lando. Welcome, Leia. For those of you who are still photographers, it's basically in body image stabilization. Now, you already know that iPhone is generally lauded for having one of the top cameras in the smartphone field. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max continues that tradition. All three of the rear cameras capture beautiful images. On my lunchtime walks, I strolled the neighborhoods of Santa Monica, turning my break into a photo walk. If you have the time or inclination, I highly recommend the activity as it's great for clearing your head and looking at the world a little differently for 30 minutes or an hour, whatever your lunchtime lunch break may be. The telephoto lens captures and shows great detail, as you can see on this chain link fence with spider web that I found. Then there's the wide angle lens with signs and other urban items and moments I captured, but I really wanted to test things, both stills and video. So what we're about to do is head out this door. It's pretty cold here in Southern California for us. That's why I have this beanie on to keep my bald head warm. We're going to test the low light HDR photography and the low light HDR video with that Dolby Vision support. We're gonna to go to a Christmas tree or candy cane lane actually. And um, I'm gonna have my sons actually record video out the car while we're driving. One will be recording video with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The other will be recording video with the iPhone 12 Pro Max is being used to shoot this video right now. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm headed out the door, let go. And with my wife driving and my son shooting video, I compared the quality of the 11 Pro Max and the 12 Pro Max. Not to show you that you should upgrade from the 11 Pro Max, but that if the 12 performs noticeably better, than the 11, you're going to see significant improvement coming from something like an eight. 
The thing you'll notice most in the difference between the 11 Pro Max and the 12 Pro Max is how much more light hits the sensor on the 12. With its more wide open aperture and larger pixels, there is added sharpness in these night images where the bulbs and the light emanating from them have greater sharpness and the surrounding areas of the image are brighter. On this sign, the light coming off the bulbs has a bit more halo with the 11 Pro Max where the light captured with the 12 Pro Max is sharper and more defined. And you see this in almost all of these photos of various lighting setups. Now, is that a night, pardon the pun, and day difference? No, but it is a visible difference and it's going to be an even bigger difference from what you're coming from if it is older than the 11 Pro Max. On to the video now. Driving through Candy Cane Lane, then going back and looking at the footage, one thing that is very subtle, but I did notice is that the 12 Pro Max's video appeared a bit smoother. That may be due to the new sensor shift stabilization or my own confirmation bias. In all seriousness, although my wife was driving really slow, so the vibrations would be low frequency, I did detect a bit smoother go with the 12. One of the things I really thought interesting was in this image of the snowman, uh, lit up snowman front yard. If you look at the white door and the white stoop behind the snowman, the actual entrance of this home we drove by, it is much better lit, has more contrast, more shadow uh, and, and white, more contrast between the shadow and white on the 12 Pro Max and the 11 Pro Max. Once again, showing that there may be something to this deep fusion and showing texture and, and giving us really great detail in low light. Now, let's take this from Candy Cane Lane and slide on down the chimney to home. Rounding out the user experience, this is not the 120 Hertz display analysts were predicting, but it is still fast enough. Battery life is savage. I never worry about burning through it. Even on days of two hours or more of actual phone usage, a rarity for me, I still haven't been able to get the battery much further than 60 or 70% drained at the end of 12 hours or more with an average of five and a half to six and a half hours of screen on time. In my initial testing of the battery, I got 20 and a half hours of battery life with eight and a half hours screen on time and still had 3% left. And while we're talking about battery life, we have to mention that this phone supports wireless charging and with it, we get a whole new charging ecosystem and Apple's new iPhone MagSafe charging, which I've talked about in depth in my iPhone 12 Pro and 12 mini reviews. So check those out if you want to dive deeper into that. And rounding out the user experience, there's the big addition of 5G. To this phone and it has more bands than any other currently on the North American market. Across the entire line of iPhone 12s, when I've taken them to an area where T-Mobile, for example, has deployed their two and a half gigahertz towers, they outscore all other 5G phones. So Apple seems to be doing something right with these antennas. And of course, this being a large format phone, we have to consider the A14 Bionic chip in gaming. Playing Call of Duty Warzone Mobile, gameplay was smooth and glitch-free on my Wi-Fi network at home. I don't think people are generally buying iPhones for gaming, but if you are a gamer and iOS is your jam, the A14 Bionic and gaming shouldn't disappoint. Only thing to note was that the phone did get a bit warmer when I was playing and using the new uh, Backbone controller I'm testing out. Pretty cool. Not much warmer, but I did notice a difference. If I had any complaints about pro model phones, here we go, it would be this. No three and a half millimeter audio jacks and no pro photo mode in the software. Given Apple's philosophy on ease of use, I can understand the no pro mode. If you want that though, you'll have to hit the app store and pick up Filmic Pro for $15. For professional videographers and filmmakers, so much of the equipment they already own is based on three and a half millimeter jacks and, and other uh, 
adapters that can work with three and a half millimeter jacks back and forth. Um, that not having one built in is questionable when we're talking pro creative creator uh, use. I mean, it isn't a huge deal because you can always pick up the appropriate lightning adapter, though your mileage may vary on whether it's going to work with your particular audio equipment and people who are making mobile audio solutions like Rode, for example, and Sennheiser and Shure are actually creating and bringing products to market, already have products on the market as a matter of fact, that make use of the lightning port. Ultimately, the Pro Max is definitely the max. It is peak iPhone, the most battery, the most camera tech, and I haven't even really had the chance to play with the new image file format Apple Pro Raw, which we just got with the update to iOS 14.3. So if you like large phones and you want max battery life, this is the phone for you, if your wallet approves. I am the Sir Mix-a-Lot of smartphones, so this is definitely my choice for iPhone daily driving, but that's more based on the size and battery life than anything else followed by the improvement in low light capabilities. So if you follow the channel, and I hope you do, we've covered every iPhone that has come out this year. Which one have you purchased? Or if you're still waiting to pay one off, wait for the uh, payment cycle to be up and pick one up, which one is on your list? I'd love to know. I'll let your mans in the comments below. Well, I'm Tashaka Armstrong. We don't take it lightly that you've spent the time with us today. If you have any questions about the types of rate plans that uh, you can pick up this phone on, on whichever carrier it might be, the researchers over at reviews.org have done an awesome job of compiling that information and comparing and contrasting it. You can check all that out there. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.